it's pretty intense. Mocking Jay Part 2? Yeah. I liked it better the first time when it was called. Uh, the Hunger Games, colon, Mocking Jay, colon, Part 1, question mark? No. Return of the Jedi. In Tarot Bang? The entire Hunger Games franchise is exactly like the entire Star Wars franchise. Uh, yeah, that's the hero's journey. Joseph Campbell, you know, uh, nobody enters a gauntlet and emerges the most important person in the world, but who cares? That's all movies. Not just that, I've got specifics. Both movies feature a totalitarian ruling class that demonstrates its power by making its citizens watch as their loved ones get killed. Hunger Games, the capital forces people to watch their children fight to the death every year. And in Star Wars, the Empire makes Leah watch as her entire home planet is blown up. And both governments are headed by weirdly aggressive white things. You know, I mean, you have President Snow, a weird, creepy white guy named Snow. And then you've got the Emperor, you know, a pale, creepy, dead scrotum in a robe. Sure, so that's the setting. Now let's get into the protagonists. Uh, I'm pretty sure Pete has gotten that taken care of. No. Yeah. No, ew, yeah. gross. Uh, so in both cases we have young, fairly bland characters on the outskirts who have to leave their homes to get thrust into the middle of the action. Luke leaves his home planet after his only known family members die. And Katniss leaves her district, leaving behind her little sister and her mother who is essentially a zombie at that point, so it's fine, you can leave her behind. They both leave and then get dropped in this crazy adventure. This is just hero's journey, okay? I mean, the, the hero gets a mentor, you know? Uh, Luke gets Obi-Wan, Katniss gets Hamish. Right, Hamish and Obi-Wan are both mentors slash surrogate father figures. They also weirdly both hold back important information from our heroes. Obi-Wan refuses to tell Luke that Vader is his father, and Hamish refuses to clue in Katniss to the fact that he and she are part of this secret rebellion to take down the Capitol. And in both cases, the information is revealed in the second movie. Oh, and in the second movie, who's Lando in Hunger Games? There's not a perfect one-to-one -one parallel for Lando, but Cloud City as an idea is represented. So in Empire Strikes Back, we meet Lando and we go to Cloud City where we're not really sure who can be trusted and where allegiances lie. Similarly, in the second Hunger Games, Katniss is thrown together with Plutarch, the game maker, and Finnick and Joanna, and she's not really sure who's on her side and who might end up trying to kill her. Yeah, both second movies were super disorienting in that way. Also super sad. Yes, the second movie, the downer movie. How does Empire Strikes Back end? Uh, the hero gets his shit fucked up, he gets his hand chopped off. Uh, his buddy gets captured, frozen, and everybody's sad. Right, and how does the second Hunger Games movie end? Our hero gets her shit fucked up. Uh, she gets electrocuted, her buddy gets captured and brainwashed, and... Oh no. Does that mean PETA is Han? Afraid so. Bummer. Yeah. Really imperfect half-baked love triangles in both movies too. You know, I mean, you've got Luke and Leia and Han, and then you've got... Peta and Katniss and Gail, and there's clearly somebody who just does not belong, you yeah. know? Yeah, love triangles are stupid and hard and unrealistic. But I still feel like we're heroes journeying here, okay? I mean, in the second act, second movie, the hero, heroine, is at their lowest, okay? I mean, and who's Yoda? Uh, uh, Lenny Kravitz, Lenny Kravitz is Yoda. And that's not stupid? Okay, that is a nonsense sentence. That's a nonsense. Luke and Katniss both have their obvious main mentors, but they also get these weird secondary mentors. Luke learns how to harness the power of the Force from Yoda via piggybacking and stuff. And Katniss learns how to challenge the government in surprising and subversive ways from Sinnet via, like, dresses and stuff. And both of their names end in A. You seem weirdly proud of a very surface level observation, just a completely superficial, like a child. And both of them die. Yeah, Again, they both die uh, and it forces our heroes to make big decisions. I still don't want you to think that you're contributing to a theory when what you're actually doing is just... White people. Yep, both franchises are full of mostly white people. Uh, now, to the conclusion of my argument. Our argument. Our argument. The end of the Hunger Games franchise sees Katniss and her band of rebels taking the fight to the capital where it hurts them the most. In the capital itself. And the end of Star Wars Luke and his rebels return to face the Empire in their home to face down that leadership. It could be argued that Star Wars was about Luke learning how to harness the power of the Force, and that Hunger Games was about Katniss learning how to harness the power of the people. And in the very yeah, end... Yeah, spoilers! Okay, uh, so the end of Return of the Jedi, Luke destroys the Empire and loses a family member in the process, and at the end of Hunger Games, a similar thing happens. Damn it! No! I... I meant... 
Spoilers for Star Wars, okay? I know how Hunger Games ends. You, you ruined the end of Star Wars for me. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. You but I'm actually be. not at all because of what year it is and how time functions. Also, neither of the big bad ruling classes made any sense. Yep, they're bad. That's why everyone was so mad. That's why Katniss revolted and the rebels rebelted. No, I just mean there's no way that either of these ruling factions would have been able to take control. Okay, I mean, across the Hunger Games franchise, we're watching the 74th, 75th, and 76th Hunger Game competition. You are, again, uh, just reciting plot points in the order in which they happen. We're not extrapolating any kind of meaningful... Which means that this world hasn't been going on forever, okay? I mean, 75 years is not that long. It means that there are people, living people, who remember when there was a time when the government was not making their children fight each other. They made a similar point in Rick and Morty on how there could never be a purge. You know, when the purge started, did people get into it right away, or were they like, wait, what? Okay, so I agree, they're bad. Everyone agrees they're bad. That's why Katniss was so angry and all those people did those things. Did you not read the books or see the movies? No totalitarian regime has ever risen to power on the idea that they were evil. Okay, Nazis, fascists, gangs, cults, all in retrospect evil things that rise to power by promising that they are totally not evil and will in fact make things better. Making children battle to the death is a transparently evil idea that would never fly. I mean, Trump doesn't run on oppressing the middle class and foreigners. He runs on making America great again. So there's no way that the Capitol could have seized control if their entire political strategy revolves around, hey, let's watch our kids kill each other until they die. Okay, that's true. You haven't really made any connection to Star Wars, though, in a while, which is what we were talking about. There isn't a lot of child death in Star Wars, but the Empire is similarly impossible and ridiculous. I mean, they just declared themselves the Empire. Of course nobody is going to follow them. Star Wars is a universe with royalty and senates and counts and lords. Like, the Ewoks govern themselves, and Jawas are a lawless species. Some planets participate in trade governed by the Galactic Empire, and some planets participate in slavery, and they have kings, and, or huts, or whatever damn thing. But the Emperor says, I dissolve the Senate. I'm the Emperor now. I mean, most people would just say, okay, um, I don't really see how that affects me on the water planet where we acknowledge a giant fat fish monster thing as our king, but fine, if that makes you feel better, you can call yourself that. Just know that you're not. You're not the emperor. Hunger Games. Both franchises pitch oppressive ruling forces that could never exist. And people like to say at the end of Return of the Jedi that there would be this like big power vacuum after the empire was dissolved, but people would actually be just fine. You know, every planet has been doing their own thing anyway. And the empire really is pretty harmless, you know, except for the whole planet exploder. Okay. Uh, we do. You said uh, people like to point out that at the end of Jedi there'd be a power vacuum when the Empire was gone. Uh, we point that out. Cracked does. We've, we've made that observation and we've written that article and published it. Oh, uh, can't get them all right. We mostly don't. A lot, it's a lot of reaching. Yeah. Hey, can you like enjoy movies when you watch them anymore? You know, I can't. I can't. Me neither. I guess this is our life now. Yes, this is our life now. Thanks for watching, and if you want to watch more, please subscribe. Uh, also, please comment below if you can think of any other movies that are just like Star Wars. Yeah, and whichever of you has the best argument, it'll get voted to the top, and you'll be declared winner. And, and then the rest of you dummies will be summarily executed, uh, as is in keeping in tone with the Hunger Games franchise. It's the risk you take commenting. Mm -hmm. So long, all you little fucking ruse.